Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Raising Dion. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're immediately picking up in the aftermath of last episode, where Brayden slash the Crooked Man showed up with his army, and Dion's the only one that's aware of what's going on. And his mom, I, I love that moment she gives him the twits. And he's not going, at first he doesn't want to tell her anything because he doesn't want her to worry because it's like, right, like, I'll just be the one to deal with it. She's like, all right, if you don't want to hug me, that's fine. But, you know, the moment we get home, I'm going to hug you real big. And as she's walking away, he comes up and hugs her. And it's like, right, like, it isn't just about the performance. It's the fact is that Brayden's here and he's going to hurt everyone, but we can't let everyone know about it. So he wants to go by himself, but his mom's like, no, we already came out on top previously when it came to that football field. So we're going to like come out on top here as well. And so uh, I love that Dion ends up, you know, going to Esperanza and let her know what's what. And it's like, no, like. If I don't come back, she's like, don't say that. He's like, but if I don't, you go ahead and, like, keep moving forward with your life. You go out there and give the best performance. Arnton's like, what's going on? It's like, we'll fill you in about it later, but the power, you know, the triangle justice, the serious one. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. It's like, yeah, like, uh, Dion's going to try and stop Brayden. So, oh, well, who's going to go on? It's like, oh, Dion's going, so someone's going to have to go on. And then I love Jonathan's like, oh, I guess it's got to be me. And then Kwame was like, no. Not you. And I'm like, uh oh, here it is. Kwame, uh, uh, time to shine. Which obviously he went on stage and killed it. But it's so befitting that he's the one to be like, no, 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 no. Uh, I guess I'll have to make this artistic sacrifice and be the one to go out here and kill it on stage. Which is also like an, a, an amazing element of just like, once again, the actor who plays Kwame just killing it. But also just like the fact is he's got like the, the backup, like choreography from the kids and then backing up. Like, I don't know. There's something like super adorable about it. So that was amazing. So all the while, like, obviously it seems like it's just going to be Nicole and Dion against Brayden and his entire army. Um, which, hey, they're handling on their own. Might not have any powers, but she's been taking some kickboxing. Well, she's been training in general. I don't know necessarily kickboxing, but yeah. And Nicole's out there kicking some ass as well. Luckily, um, Tevin shows up, but they're not alone. Janelle pops up too, uh, like reconstituting herself, which I'm like, I love like just like how that looks just cinemat cinematically, like just like how she like reformed herself, so... Obviously, she's able to do a lot now. Like, I think, you know, pushing her powers even further than before. And so, because at one point you see her, like, basically, like, breaking the dirt down and just kind of, like, basically kind of earth bending, which is pretty dope. Um, all, all the while making sure that everyone on the inside is safe. Uh, but obviously they're completely outnumbered. Um, but when it comes down to it, and I do like that it's actually Nicole that was able to reach Brayden because Dion kept trying to reach him using his powers. Like, I know you're still in there, but it's like, nope, couldn't reach him. But in that moment, you know, she was able to do what she's done so far. And I think it's kind of her superpower. It's her talking to people. Like, what she's done for Janelle, what she's obviously been able to do for Dion. I mean, I think even to some extent, you know, because Tevin has kept walls up, you know, but he made a promise to not keep walls up. And I think the fact is that him and um, Nicole, like, having the connection they have, like, it's showing you how good she is with powered people. And she was able to speak to Brayden just, you know, as a, as a mom, of being like, I can only imagine and know what your mom felt as a mom myself. It's like you losing your dad to the crooked man sucks. It, it is terrible that you had to lose your mom, too. So I can't fully know what you're feeling, but I, I think I know how your mom felt. That your mom was hopeful and proud of you, hopeful that you'd have a whole bunch of friends, that you'd be okay, you know, that you'd be loved, and you know, so kind of focus on that. And she was able to get him to kind of snap out of it into the point because I think Dion probably like helped lodge a lot of that free the moment he let that part of um Brayden free at the end well previously I think setting that part of Brayden free like as, as a whole like kind of gave him the opportunity so he was able to just I think probably also you add in his power too like he was probably able to just like push and take control back from the um from the crooked man, because I think without it, 
without a host, it's not that like it's powerful, but it's just not as powerful without a host. So I love that it is kind of crawling, almost just kind of in a weakened state. Because I guess like being jettisoned from the body, like it needs a viable host to really like focus all its energies. Because other than that, I guess without a host, like maybe. I don't know if it necessarily would just dissipate, but, you know, because it immediately left, went after everything with Pat, it immediately went off and found a body to stay in for, like, the past two years, Brayden's to, like, stay strong, but, uh, goes in and tries to activate all the flowers, but, uh, Dion's asking his mom, he's like, no, let me go down there, trust me, I can do this, and she does, and... Not only is he able to kill the plants, he's in, in the process, he ends up reverting everything, because I guess... By killing what is essentially the source to everything, um, it ended up killing the infection and everyone, including Nicole. Like, even those who were already gone, like Mr. Gary. So, which begs the question, how did they handle all of that? Did they, did uh, Biona, like, just say, like, oh, it's part of the um, the leak? Like, the gas leak we had warned about? Like, it was just kind of a mass hallucination and some people were infected? Or did they end up having to finally be like... All right, so there's all this super-powered stuff. Like, dude, I'm curious, because like, they kind of skate over that, so we don't know how they responded to that. But luckily, Simone showed up, too, and obviously she's apologetic to Janelle. Like, once again, it's just like, she wasn't trying to be, I don't, she's not a bad person. It's just like, she acted out of fear. She was scared. She, you know, doing what any person would do, like, when they care about someone they love, just being in danger. It's like, you know, her mother instincts kicked in. It's like, wow, I'm trying to protect you. And sadly, like, this is her world, and you can't necessarily protect her from it, you know? Because if she's more normal, then you don't have to worry about her getting dragged into this. Because it's also like, right, as a mom, like, how am I supposed to protect you? Like I said, there's parallels between her and uh, Nicole in that regard, but... Luckily, they were able to save the day, and obviously there's a whole situation with Braden, which we never got any clarity for, but, you know, at the end of the day, because what Nicole has said to him, it's like, he's like, I'm already bad, but it's like, no, you don't have to be, yes, you've made some bad choices, but what you do right now is def is what defines who you are, you know, so I think he can make up for it, so... I mean, let's not forget the kid did. Granted, all the killing wasn't him. That was the crooked man. But that, I don't know, man. That kid's going to probably need some therapy after all this. Like, he is going to need a lot of help. But luckily, Nicole did form a village around for Dion. So I think that village, once again, uh, helps everyone. Because regardless of everything, like, Dion's like, I thought we were friends. So, like, him, like, Brayden is still his friend. It's like, right, the crooked energy just got the best of you. Which begs the question, can the same thing be said about Pat? Because Dion and Pat had that, and I think that's kind of interesting, and maybe that speaks volumes, I never, I didn't think about it just now, like, Pat and Dion have only had one scene together in the entire, like, second season, so, I wonder, is there any redemption, any potential saving him with the, like, post-credits thing, kind of seems like that's not possible, but we'll get to it when we get to it, but... He's in a different circumstances because, once again, that thing came from Pat. So it's kind of like it's a representation of who he is to some extent. Brayden was able to kind of be free. And maybe that's kind of also another thing, too, of just thinking parallel-wise how Pat can't be forgiven, yet Brayden can. Because there's a big difference because Pat kind of, yeah, he might have been controlled with the power, but it was all born from his own darkness. Whereas Brayden, it just, it manipulated the darkness that was already in him. But, um... If I had to say anyone was, like, the biggest bad, it's like, man, David comes off looking like the most evil person ever. He's just like, I mean, can you, he's like, oh, man, the telekinesis and stuff like that. Susan's like, really? There's someone over here potentially dying. He's like, yeah, but whatever. If he dies, whatever, we can, like, harvest his organs and stuff like that. Susan's like, are you crazy? What is up? With, what's wrong with you? Because the sad thing is, you could tell at the beginning of the season, like, Suzanne was just kind of, there was kind of something there. And I was just kind of like, man, I can't believe I was feeling anything towards you. you you're a monster. Like, hold, like, you and Pat are a match made in heaven with how evil you guys are. Uh, and it seems like he's going to die. It's just like, right, why aren't they defibbing him? It's like, well, he was an electrical monster, so probably defibbing him isn't the best idea. But Kat tries her best to save him because at the time, it's like, he might be the only means of saving Nicole, along with a whole bunch of other people. But then David was like, nah, cut it, stop it. Uh... You know, examine his body after his, I want to get samples, yada, yada, yada. But Pat eventually wakes up. I don't know whether it's just the extra stuff Cat did or whether he was just in a comatose enough state that it's just like, right, his body needed to fully adjust. So rather than burning up from the inside out, he's, as a doctor, uh, that scientist, Dutch doctor said, pretty much became Superman. So he wakes up, he's like, oh, I'm fine, I'm good. He's like, yeah, 
but he's basically like, you are going to lock me up forever, so I kind of don't have to do anything you guys don't want me to, and so um, he's got, we have no idea what the long list of abilities he ended up getting, we know he has telekinesis, um, he still kind of has that electricity ability of his, but with him fusing with the, um, with him fusing with the crooked man, the crooked energy again, it begs the question of can, will it manifest in the same way or will he, like, will he look like the way he looked like last season or will he still just maintain his, because Brayden it transforming that, because I guess so much of the crooked energy, because it had to like basically reform itself, it will never be what it was before, but it ended up being something new, I guess, and maybe that's the same thing with, uh, with the uh, Pat. Once again, I guess it makes it even more twisted, like him still making his nerdy references, because he's like, he's making a joke to um, Suzanne being like, oh, you shall not pass. He's like, yeah, it didn't work out too nicely for Gandalf. And then when David, he makes a reference to David, it's like, oh, you want to be this to me? And David's like, I, I legitimately bust out laughing. He's like, I don't, I, I don't know what you're saying. And it's just like, okay, I guess it's like, you know, it's kind of like Shazam with the whole, like, Mark Strong thing. He's giving this monologue, and then just, like, Shazam's like, what? What are you saying? I can't, I can't, what? I can't hear you. Like, that's what it, you know, so. It kind of had that same energy. It makes it just so interesting, um. That even in this moment, you see Pat, and you know what he's done, who he is, and he's souped up, powerful. You're like, oh, we could do so much together. Like, oh, we could make a lot of money. He's like, I have all this power. Why do I need money? It's like, once again, he's feeling himself. Like, oh, I could be a god now. Yeah, he's like, but he's like, yeah, but I could I could help you make your own army. And he's like, yeah, I, 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 I like that. Because it also gives him more people to rule over. So kind of flexing that and moving the needle more towards that. Oh, I'm feeling himself, feeling like a god thing. But um, I thought what was so interesting, though, is um, once the crooked energy came back to him, Pat's like, I did try to be a better person. I did try to be good, but it's hard. So welcome back, old friend. And it is kind of sad because, like, the entire scene, like I, like I said, I felt conflicted because it did seem like on some level he was trying, but it always seemed like there was an ulterior motive behind every move he made. Rather than him being good for the sake of being good, it, like the sad thing is he had to try so much. Uh, kind of like someone without any empathy or whatever. It's like, you know, he legitimately said like, oh, I came back because I wanted to help. It's like, because of what Brayden said, it begs the question, like, maybe because for him, he there, there's the crooked energy in him always being drawn to the other crooked energy. And maybe um, it's just simply the thing of, hey, I'm a, I, uh, I may have on some level wanted my powers back, but I legitimately was trying to be a good person. Once again, he never bothered telling anyone like, Hey, so that kid, Brayden, yeah, he came to me, and he's a quick, like, once again, like, you add up all the stuff you did, and it's like, uh, you're still a bad guy, you're still net zero, my dude, you're actually, in a, you're still, in, actually, not even net zero, because that would be like, oh, you're even kilter, it's like, no, you're still in the negatives, when it comes to, like, on the, you know, scale of good and bad, you're still, like, leaning bad, meaning on a more negative scale, so it's like, I don't know, and obviously having a crooked energy back, like, what that means in the long run, like I said. Uh, I'm assuming with the way, like I said, once again, the post-credit thing that David ended up helping him, which is, I'm like, man, it's like, that means you are, you're assisting with just all the terrible stuff that he does. That makes you um, culpable for all that, too. It's just like, yeah, like, you're so willing to work and do all this for profit, but you're basically helping rise up a super villain in this world so that's definitely not going to help in the long run but maybe it's going to be a thing of eventually david would regret it but if you ever did regret it and try to turn against him pat would kill you or maybe pat gets what he wants from you and decides to kill you anyway you know so who knows but also uh you got to give it up to esperanza going out there i love that i call him it's like all right you do this you uh make them forget about uh jennifer hudson you make them forget about jennifer holiday it's like ooh. I took that. I took that too far. That that was way too far. And she's like, "I'm just gonna show them my heart." And he's like, "Well, as long as your heart can reach the back row." I'm like, "I love you so much, Kwame." Uh, but yeah, uh, Esperanza went out there, poured out her heart, 
And luckily at the end, everyone was able to show up and be there in that final moment, like of her performance and stuff like that. Uh, Gary, um, Dion, his mom, uh, Janelle, as well as um, Simone. So, and I think it's kind of adorable to be like, oh, Triangle Bower, and everyone's, you know, clapping for her performance. And just even Kwame being like, oh, sh-. like, I, I, you know, he felt her heart and everything in that moment. So I thought, I thought it was just kind of a beautiful, nice ending on that regard. Once again, we still never got an answer for what, what that was about, um, Esperanza, like, whether there's, like, some power thing there, or is it just being, like, no, like, it's just, like, who she is in her core, like, is so strong that it's, like, nah, even your mind control is not gonna work on me, so I thought that was fascinating. Like I said, we're just kind of leaving that a little open, but, uh, kind of, we get our two days later thing, once again, we don't know, like, how Biona, like, ended up answering a lot of this, but turns out, Suzanne is giving Kat a, a lab at Biona because it's like, right, she found her calling of like, right, trying to find a way to neutralize all the powers that Pat has because it's like, right, he's still out there, he's still a danger, so, once again, still maintaining his supervillain status, so it just becomes a situation we gotta figure that out. Obviously, like, Nicole still gotta, like, you know, it's like, right, I'm still gonna be here. Everything that she was saying to Brayden, obviously, Dion, it resonated with him too because it's like, right, you aren't just saying that for Brayden's sake, you're also telling me at the same time so obviously she's kind of had to loosen her grip a little bit it's like all right you get to ride your bike to school in like 30 minutes he's like all right start the clock so it gets to do a superhero thing it's like right but she he doesn't have to do it in secret it's like right i'm aware of what you're doing so i uh, gotta loosen my grip a little bit and you know that's something janelle kind of um janelle's mom has to had to kind of i'm sure still processing and dealing with in her own right too but um that, that was kind of a neat ending to it. And I was actually, like I said, really surprised by the post credits because I'm like, I was like, oh, like we're getting like, what, like a couple months into the future. It's like, no, we didn't really get a good look at him, but it's like Dion's much older. Now, whether he's like a teenager, or whether he's a full grown adult, either way, he's much older. And I was like, oh, that was, I was curious like whether they would do like a time skip thing or not. But the fact is, it seems like, oh, I did my thing, and Atlanta's going to be, like, the last stop, at least on, like, the supervillain, Pat, supervillain world tour. So, that in itself, I haven't looked up in anything. I'll look up things. I usually like to get my thoughts out first and foremost before I really look into, you know, season renewals and stuff like that. But, initially, I'm always like, the fact is they gave it that ending makes me feel like this is kind of the end for the show, right? Like... It could be a thing of maybe they didn't know if they were getting a third season because I I'm not well versed in the comics so I don't know like how much they're like how much um, story is in the comic that they're pulling from because like maybe the com because I don't know actually the status of the comic whether it's still going or whether it is actually complete or not like for example like why last minute even before the show came about like obviously it'd been years they were trying to make it a thing but like the comic was done well before then so I'm wondering if there's I mean same thing in like the case of Preacher and stuff like that so I'm curious like is this supposed to be designed in a way where it's like no like this is actually kind of like this is telling all the story that this comic has already or is there still room for more is it just like you're just setting up like oh like we got like there there is a plan you know that it's, but it's just like, it feels like the fact that they end on that makes it seem like a, no, we're ending things here potentially. Uh, that doesn't mean there still isn't plenty of story they could tell in between because it's like, right, I'm sure like the Biona thing is still going to like continue out as like uh, more people come in, other like superpower people or, you know, kids. Like once again, Dion and Brayden are the only ones who are second generation, whereas like people like Janelle are, um, first generation power people just like um mark or pat or uh brayden's dad or uh tevin so there's still a lot of like story they like we could because it could be a thing of like yeah pat's just kind of like this because that because that speaks volumes too because that means like pat was never dealt with if like dion's that much older but maybe it has something to do with the fact is it could be it could be not necessarily a time skip thing. It could be like maybe because of his powers or something, he's like, right, I need to get older faster. And so he uses his powers to make himself older. Obviously he gets like the full blown like we get a tiny look at the suit and everything. Cause obviously like present day, like at the end there he had um 
he had modified his mind mover sh uh, sh disguise because now it's like one M instead of two. And obviously we see like, like I said, the more armored up suit he has. So like that means like either it's just been a continuous battle with Pat, like maybe like people around the world have been able to try and fight him off and Atlanta ends up being the, like there's a lot you can infer from that. And part of me is also like, well, not unless that was supposed to be like a, yeah, that's a potential thing, but not unless that's supposed to be like a, now that's Dion's mind thinking like, oh, I'm going to take down Pat and it's going to be this epic battle and I'm, you know, but it seemed like that was kind of like a time skip thing, but like, it, there's a lot you can infer from that. Like, it's just being like, wow, like this is him, Dion, maybe like, a, it's definitely a couple years in the future. And it means like Pat was still never dealt with in that time. In fact, he just grew stronger and stronger, amassed an army, looked like the, everything outside of Atlanta seemed like it was pretty roughed up. So... I mean, it might not be that the rest of the world is kind of reflective of that, which I'd assume it is, because maybe he went around targeting other superpower people, and Biona's been trying to, like, rein that in. Once again, just a lot of speculation on my part, so. At the time of me recording it, which it is currently uh, February 12th, there's still no news, which, once again, the season only came out, like, two weeks ago. Once again, sometimes Netflix is fast about stuff, other times they're not. Um... So I was reading some stuff really quickly, not a lot, but then it's like, oh, it sets up a time travel stuff. I was like, yeah, that could be the thing of like, yeah, this is an older Dion where he is from a future where Pat kind of does his thing. And then we set up, I, I, not without reading too much into it, just seeing that headline, I'm like, oh, I could definitely see that being like your, your typical time travel story of like, I'm, I'm you from the future, things went wrong, so I come back in time and like, I'm here to set things right. It could be that type of thing of like, right, try to stop, cut pat off at the past of like right we need to deal with pat now because if we don't deal with him now he's going to grow too strong in the future and like the world's going to be in danger i didn't even think about that that should have been like popped in my head but it didn't so that could definitely be um how they need to handle that i mean like i said because it sets up an interesting thing for you to go that far in the future like i said it's kind of you can infer like oh man pat wasn't stopped in all that time and also it leaves like a lot of stuff open like yeah what about Braden? what about other people being brought into the flow what is biona doing going forward like you know david and stuff like that so have casting it um and also you kind of do a you know you don't get a good look at future dion so eventually you could cast like a future dion to potentially like like i said i took it as like maybe he like you had you know because he can't make up his own powers uh like he he did the tornado thing at the beginning and like he used it during that fight against um Braden and all those monsters so I was like maybe he like used the power to age himself up really quickly but you know you never know uh but yeah like it, it being a time travel story like him coming back in time being like I have to I have to save the future kind of very like flash-esque thing to some extent like that'd be really interesting um because that way, like I said, that way, like, it is that thing, too, of, like, oh, my God, this is future me. Oh, my God, I'm going to be so cool. It's like, yeah, and he has all these answers, and he knows what ends up happening in the future. But it's the thing of, like, right, so that thing, you know, it's like that, that typical time travel rule of, like, sure, I'm not, I shouldn't say anything about the future too much because I don't want to, I want maybe, you want to change the future for the better, but maybe it's not good knowing how things play out for a lot of people. Maybe it's something of that nature. So, like I said, I didn't even really give that element to a thought, but uh, that is something interesting. So, because uh, like I said, in my head, I was thinking like, oh, because they did the time skip thing, it made me think like immediately like, oh, like you're, but it, it, it still would leave room open. But I think it just, in my head, I was thinking like, man, it'd always be the thing you know that super far in the future. Well, not super far, but sometime in the future, Pat's going to come off being the super bad and that no one would able to stop him at all but um like i said there's still plenty of story in between that can be filled in sure but uh, uh, you include that time travel potential time travel element that would be uh an interesting uh element to it all but uh yeah i, I do hope we do get a season three and that ends up being the case now now that that's kind of like i was already excited for a notion of a season three regardless but like i said that i just i kind of finited it in my head once again i've never read the comic book so i don't know like where the comic story goes, and in comparison to the show, like, what the show um, adapted from the comic, what the show changed from the comic, that is something I'm going to have to look into later, but, yeah, I'd be excited to see a season three if that is kind of like the time travel element ends up being something that they do utilize, so. Uh, fingers crossed, hoping for a season three. Um, hopefully we get some news fairly soon. It might still take a while, but still. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good
Bye.